Your destination is on the left. Penobscot Green Museum. So come along with me and see what we can see. As you see here, they are open daily Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sunday, noon to 5. And down below is the website. Now they do have handicap parking as well as a nice ample parking area. And they have free Wi Fi, by the way. Now to start out, you have to go into the Main Street Gallery entrance, which is where the Visitor Center is. This is inside the visitor center. A nice little mini museum. As well as an art gallery. After you pay at the visitor center, they do give you a map and they tell you the tours for the day and what time they are. Today we just happen to be starting out at the Fowler True Ross House from 1815. Now this is where you discover the lives of the Seaport's sea captains and their families through a tour of this historic house featuring beautiful 19th century art, textiles, and furniture. Can't wait to take you along for this tour. This is going to be awesome. Um, and what he bought is this room and that room. The original farmhouse was built between 1801 and 1815. Now in 1815, Miles Fowler, a farmer and a schooner captain, bought the land, which encompasses almost the whole current museum campus. And he bought the house for $1,500. There was a large street side addition built before 1837 with the characteristic federal style symmetry uh, to its new room layout. At the same time, the interior of the existing farmhouse was refinished with new plaster to the way that it kind of looks like today. That same year, the barn was also moved to its present location. Miles and Jane Fowler they raised four children in this house, four kids. Now their descendants occupied the home until 1896 when the house was sold to a Mr. Cyrus True. In the back of the Fowler True Ross house, you will find the Fowler True Ross barn. And inside that barn, oh neat, thank you. You'll be able to trace the influence of the birch bark canoe construction and boat building techniques on other main iconic canoes, such as the O Town style canoe. And it's a birch bark canoe made in the 1800s and it survived till today. Incredible. Now, these gardens although pretty and smell really nice. 
What they do is they represent that the sailors were also farmers, which was a very common practice at the time. And just like most families at uh, Pentecost Bay, the Fowler family combined going to sea with farming. They also had a quarter acre garden. This building is the carriage house. And when you walk inside, you get to experience the lives of summer people who took to the water in main built rowboats and outboard motorboats and boats from far away in the rowboats for rusticators exhibit. Near the rowboat museum, you have boats down on the floor and on the ceiling, as well as all kinds of really neat photographs and each with their own story. I can tell you right now, from the money that we paid, we've only been in a few buildings, and so far it's worth it. They really put their heart and soul into these displays. And some of the pieces that you see that are from this area, you just wonder how did these people keep this stuff? How did they preserve it? It is mind boggling, but I'm so glad they did. Now they also have what's called the yard in the yard to furl the sail on a square rigger. And this is where Emily will be showing us how to do that. Diddy bag? Yep. Okay. This is my needle case. This is called a FID. And this is used for splicing rope, which is weaving rope back into itself to make a continuous loop or joining two, two ropes together permanently. Now in the boathouse, when you go inside, you will see the largest vessels from the museum's collection. That tells the story of Maine's recreational and commercial boating culture. Now the Duncan Boat Barn, or Duncan Barn, was built right around 1845. And inside you can explore a variety of racing class one design sloops that were popular in yacht clubs among Maine's coasts. And you can step down to the bottom lower level to discover Maine's iconic small fishing rowboat designs. And here's a shot of the back side of that awesome barn, as well as the Nichols colored Duncan house. Now this wonderful example of 1845 architecture is the Nichols Cockord Duncan house. Now it is currently the home of the main ocean school and you can currently find out more at www.maineoceanschool.org. Now, fortunately, we cannot go inside because this is staff only. <laughs> now, that's a camera. Awesome. Let's see what's inside. Now, this camera obscura is here to demonstrate the type of photography they had at the time. 
So what you do, you walk inside, you close the door, you wait a few minutes, and then you will see the world projected upside down on the back of the camera, the white screen. Now this does work best on bright sunny days. Now today it was a little overcast, so not the best to test it out, but it worked, kind of. Now this is the old town hall, circa 1845 where you get to explore Maine's fish and fisheries. Don fishing gear, then steer a lobster boat and climb aboard a dory, as well as get to put rubber bands on lobsters. Ooh. Outside, you can also have some fun picks. Now here we have the Douglas and Margaret Carver Memorial Gallery to the left, and the Stephen Phillips Memorial Library to the right. Now unfortunately we could not go into the archives, um, the Memorial Gallery, because uh, they were closed. However, we are going to go in and take a small look to the Stephen Phillips Memorial Library. And walking inside, you do have a nice little presentation of what's in the gallery collection. And also, nice exhibits and even more bathrooms. Now again, at the moment, the archives were closed. We just made it towards the end of the day, back to this area. But normally you can go in and peruse the photo archives at your leisure. Now the archive library, they do normally have someone in here to help you with your research. But again, we got here towards the end of the day and the researcher was not available to speak to us. But just knowing that it's here and they have something like this, I think is absolutely phenomenal. Now this is the old vestry, circa 1841. Inside, when it's open, you get to view photography exhibits in this gallery and educational space. The museum offices are located upstairs. On the opposite side of the vestry is where you would find the most convenient parking, as well as a handicap ramp. Inside the door that the ramp enters. You will also find the handicapped bathrooms and a small exhibit downstairs. In this Merrithew house, circa 1826, we explore the history of the Penobscot Bay, including the Revolutionary War's disastrous Penobscot expedition. The busy industry is relying on the natural resources around the bay and the far-reaching shipping industry's souvenirs of the China trade. Jeremiah and Jane Merrithew built their house shortly after they purchased the property in 1826 from Miles Fowler. Now built of brick hauled by oxen 10 miles overland from Swansville the house sits atop the highest point of land in what was to become the center of Searsport Village. Its location was convenient for Captain Merrithew's business because his shipyard, founded in 1816, was located at the foot of Elm Street. Now this turn of the century photograph shows the majestic elms in front that died, like so many others, of Dutch elm disease. Now one thing I've noticed is most of these older buildings are handicapped accessible with handicapped ramps and all that. So I give this museum big kudos for making that happen. Unfortunately there are some areas it's just impossible to make handicapped accessible. So yeah that's a little sad but I can see how much work they put into 
to make as many places handicapped accessible as possible. So again, big thumbs up and kudos to you for that. Now this church is the First Congressional Church of Seaport, circa 1838. Now this house of worship is not owned by the museum, but the museum does tours in here. So go ahead and ask at the front desk and I'll be more than happy to tell you when they're touring next. Now this is the Savage Education Center Dutch House, circa 1848. Here you get to experience 19th century life on shore and on board a down easter. Play the sailor's game Skittles, practice caulking a wooden ship, test your signal flag and ship identification knowledge, and dress up in Victorian clothes. Oh yeah. Little kids are going to love this place. <laughs> Let me tell you, honestly, if you are ever in this area, you got to check this museum out. It is awesome. Emily, Joe, I forget everybody else's name, <laughs> but they were all fantastic, very helpful. I would not hesitate to, to tell my friends and family to come here. It is that good. 